Well, howdy diddly dandy there, chums, this I, Captain of the Steves, and today, chums, for you guys in the viewerverse, I want to talk a little bit about an article that I stumbled across on the old tinterwebs. So this is apparently documented evidence from two universities, one in South California, US, and Peking University, I believe, over here in the UK. Anyway, this article, and I'll put it up on the screen so you can see what I'm on about, discusses the core of the Earth may have slowed and then came to a stop and is now reversing and it says that it's got ramifications on the planet but it doesn't go into too much and it's saying that maybe we might be seeing some of those effects even now chums inside the view of us now i have found a bit of video evidence back in 2023 of a lady online saying actually this is nothing to worry about and this has been said in the past and it is still not a thing to worry about about the earth's cool slowing but that hasn't stopped or reversed or it hasn't in other documents that i'm reading unless i'm missing some evidence out there but anyway take a listen to this lady because she makes quite a lot of sense i'm going to play her video right here while i sit back and drink some of my beverage my hot beverage this morning anyway take a listen the earth's core is not reversing all of these headlines are wrong the core does seem to be slowing down but here's why you shouldn't worry about that so in the 90s scientists found evidence that the earth's core was spinning slightly faster than the rest of the earth then just last month geoscientists at the university of beijing found evidence that the earth's core seems to have slowed down since then and is now spinning slower than the rest of the planet so then a lot of headlines came out saying that it was reversing which is not right. Here's how to visualize this. We think that the inner core changed from moving slightly ahead of us to moving slightly behind. One astronomer compared it to passing a car on a highway. To you, it looks like it's going backward, but everybody's moving in the same direction. People have been keeping track of this since the 1960s. We think that the Earth's core has a 70 year cycle of speeding up and slowing down, but it could be shorter than that. Big picture, scientists all agree nothing drastic is gonna happen here, but it's wild that we know so little about the inner workings of our own planet. This is evidence that there's a lot to learn. Okay, chums, well, I think she raised some very good points there, and there could be nothing to actually worry about. But when you think about the Earth's core, it's actually linked to what happens on the Earth's surface. Now, above the Earth's surface is what's called the magnetosphere. Now, the magnetosphere is what shields us from the sun, and it's created by our magnetic field created by the core. So everything is relative that I'm talking about right now. The magnetosphere, which protects us against the sun, has been doing some strange things for the last decade or so, maybe even longer. And it shows all sorts of waves and how it's changing the poles. And you can find articles. I mean, if, if you just type in magnetic changes to Earth, you come back with this AI sort of ensemble that says about the whole polar reversal type stuff. But that's not what I searched for. I mean, I've got the results up on screen right now. And then when you scroll to the bottom of that, there's another article that says Science Alert, and that's the actual name of the website, funny enough. You go over to there, and they've got a video on there that shows these magnetic changes 40,000 years ago, where they think that there was this, a massive shift. But you can see on their video, uh, uh, their video actually makes a sound of what it may have sounded like over those thousands of years. Now, our own planet has been making some strange sounds like trumpety weird sounds in the sky and cracking the sounds that we have heard. That's not too dissimilar from this sound effect clip that I'm about to play you. Take a watch and a listen to this. So yeah, that's rather terrifying. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, it's a bit mental. What wasn't terrifying about it, though, was the time plan. I mean, 40,000 years ago, and you can see it's ticking up thousands over a second. So they reckon that the polar reversal is going to be a slow, gradual thing okay, over on that website. So it's not really a science alert. Oh, you've got to take heed now because you've got thousands of years. But the way I look at magnets, I mean, this this... I mean, the Earth being a giant magnet is a bit different than two little magnets that you might have in your hand. But if you get two magnets and you start pushing them together, 
they're going to slowly start to repel. They're going to slowly start to turn. And all of a sudden, flip! You try it with two magnets. You try it with two magnets and you'll see what I mean. I kind of feel that that's kind of what we're going to experience on a much larger scale. So yes, it might be gradual, 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 but then I think flip. And that's why we see evidence of class giant floods, you know, 40 days, 40 nights. It's, it's stipulated in a lot of the religious texts. It's also stipulated inside of the clay tablets of the Sumerians, the first people to document language, religion and everything. And they documented these floods happening in a very quick period, like massive massive tidal waves, massive floods, all that sort of stuff. And it could be that we've based a lot of our religious text off of these Sumerian tablets with the whole flood theory and flood sort of stuff, you know? But if you've got if you've got lots of reference points referencing the same thing, then you can kind of say, well, hold on, maybe this is historical, maybe this is documented evidence, maybe we shouldn't be dismissing this stuff. I kind of feel if there is going to be a polar shift, it could happen very quickly. Now, there's a very good channel that I really, really like, and there's a video by them that I strongly suggest you watch straight after this one. They're called the Y Files, and there's a little talking goldfish on it. And the talking goldfish has got a tinfoil hat on. He's the conspiracy theorist, this goldfish in a bowl. And then you've got this chap, I can't remember his name, but he talks about what he thinks and his take. And then the goldfish chimes in with their take. It's great. The Y Files is very cool. And they do it in such a decent way. All their research is awesome in my opinion i'll put a link to their video over here go and watch their video after this one i'd also put it in the video description to make it nice and easy to find but since i've just talked about hecklefish the conspiracy goldfish now i like to look at conspiracies in a slightly different way i'd imagine to a lot of people out there think about your chances of winning the lottery right so if you've only got one ticket, it's a one in a million chance or whatever of winning the lottery. If you start buying multiple tickets, you know, the chances of you win the lottery goes up. So the chance is a lot slimmer. When you look at conspiracy theories, I think you can do the same thing. If there's evidence, whistleblowers and factual elements to that conspiracy, you can kind of say, well, is it really a theory anymore or does it have more potential of being actual fact than theory so take for example let's go for the craziest one out there reptilians yeah humans that can shape shift into reptilians at will well what's the evidence for that we've got a lot of eyewitness accounts we've got different testimonies of people that probably can compare stories to one another and inflate and create this sort of theory have we got any tangible evidence in history? Yes, we've got things like the Tibetan dragon dance. We've got different cultures like the Naga. The India believe that there's half snake, half human characters. There's also the serpent inside of the Bible saying you will crawl on the belly for the rest of your days as a punishment. Does that mean the upper part of the body remained human? So you've also got like the tales of Medusa inside of Greek mythology. You've got Beowulf. You've got all these accounts in history of half reptilian, half humanoid people, even Japan, where they've got their royalty that could morph from dragon to human. But have we actually got any physical evidence today of this happening? No, just testimony from people that may have been abducted against their will, didn't want to be in those circumstances anyway. And if you have been abducted, maybe chloroform or other agents were involved, be that psychedelics or alcohol in large quantities. And if you already think this person is inhuman and you're already demonizing them inside of your head and you have been given some sort of substance that may make that reality in your head visually acceptable or hallucinated, it kind of makes you think that perhaps their truth is their truth, but it's not reality. Captain Steve, oh, Captain Steve, oh, Captain, Captain. Heck yeah. Why not hit that like and subscribe? Thank you very much. You know? But then you can look at other conspiracy theories that have got lots of whistleblowers, have got lots of facts, and even got some government papers suggesting that it is actually happening. Think of chemtrails. Chemtrails, I mean, I'm going to use BBC articles right here, but you can see dating back, it was very much all oh, these tinfoil hat wearing nutters are saying this about chemtrails and this is happening. And then a few years later, they changed their tone a little bit. Maybe we could start using some of this sort of science to help us stave off global warming and climate change. 
to then this year them saying actually this is happening and this is how it's happening and hopefully it's going to help stave off climate change the narrative changed relatively quickly over a small span of time now a lot of people that entertain conspiracies they also say well what's the difference between conspiracy theory and conspiracy fact it's about five years and that's pretty much what we've just seen with the whole chemtrail thing happening and panning out right in front of our eyes people so I still entertain conspiracies. I kind of like them. I dabble with them, but I don't over entertain them as fact. But I do like seeing them evolve into fact over time. I mean, some evolve quicker than others. Think of the Wuhan lab and the wet market circumstances around the origins of COVID and see where we are now, for example. That one evolved over a space of two years, not five. But it's still not 100% accepted as mainstream as the origins. Will we ever get to the bottom of it? Will we ever get factual evidence? We'll see. So I just had another swig of my old coffee there. Uh, well, hot beverage. Oh, usually it's a cup of tea. I've got coffee today, people. It's decaf though, isn't it? It's nearly tea. It's nearly tea. I'm not I'm not a tea trader. Honest, people. Honest. <laughs> anyway, so where am I going with all of this stuff? What I'm trying to put across to you is, although that we've got two universities saying that the core has reversed and is going the other way, and we've got other people saying, no, this is a load of tosh. I think rather than saying it's a load of tosh or that it's fact, what we should be doing at the moment is giving more funding to other universities and other scientific institutes to either say yes or no, or whether it can't be discerned. It needs to be peer reviewed. It needs some sort of peer review and some sort of oversight. We can't just put this stuff out into the ether and say, here you go, here's nightmare fuel, because that's not really how things should work, people. And then you've got people like me on YouTube just giving my take when I've got no idea on whether even the earth is a solid metal core. I mean, even that to me is questionable. Why, you say? Why? Because science also says if you put something under heat and under pressure, it turns from being a solid to a liquid to a gas to a plasmatic state. Think of our sun, right? Our sun is a plasmatic nuclear fusion reaction type thing, right? It's, it's, it's gone beyond gas. It's now a plasma. So if you put something under heat and under pressure, I wouldn't say that it's going to still be a solid. I would say our internal mechanism of our planet is more likely to be like the sun. You know, I mean, how are suns formed exactly? I would say it was probably from a planet much like ours that has crumbled and decayed and the inner sun has ripped it apart, is what I would say. I would say planets are the birthing mechanism for a sun. Is that too crazy? Have I just made up a new theory? I don't. I have not heard anybody else say this. Oh, 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 oh. I am a concocter of a new theory. Does should I be getting the tin foil out and wrapping myself up? I don't know, people. But that's what makes logical sense to me. That's what my gut's telling me. That's what my mind's telling me. But then you've got other people out there where their minds and their guts tell them that the Earth is actually flat. You know, we we could go on all day about all this stuff. But what I'm trying to get to you, chums, out there in the viewers, is I kind of feel that all this stuff about the Earth's core stopping, slowing, reversing, and the fact that we might be going through some sort of shift, and it would that could explain why all these billionaires and millionaires are making bunkers to survive some sort of apocalyptic event. I mean, that could just be one scenario. Let's, let's face it, we've got a giant asteroid approaching us called Atlas 3i that might not be an asteroid at all. It could be an alien mothership. Yeah, I've done a video on that, people. Go hit that one up over there. Lovely stuff. But we've also got organisations like the BBC that change their narrative as they please and don't apologise to all the people that they may have offended along the way. But yeah, I've actually cancelled my BBC television licence for similar reason. Got a video on why I cancelled my BBC licence, if you want to see that one right there. Yeah, so there's a lot of things going on. Now, another thing that I would suggest, since I'm suggesting watching different videos of mine, and trying to keep you on my channel that little bit longer as I'm winding up this one. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm doing. I know, it's sneaky, right? I'm like the BBC, but hopefully better looking. <laughs> How many people have just unsubscribed, Steve? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, anyway, anyway. I've got another video. So I talked about HARP, the High Active Aura program 
research program. There's an R in there. Harp. Okay. Maybe this thing is firing energy up into our magnetosphere, the thing that shields us from the sun and all that sort of stuff, but also keeps our magnetic synchronicity of our planet, hopefully in check. They're measuring that by firing energy at it. Now, to me, that feels like trying to measure how pure water is by pouring in maybe Ribena. You know, it doesn't quite make sense, the whole story behind why they're firing giant pulses of energy, like electricity, like super mega billion watts, like stupid amounts of electricity into our magnetosphere. So I done a video saying, well, what if HARP isn't this dubious weather modification thing, but perhaps they're trying to recharge our magnetosphere to stop a polar reversal. And I haven't heard people come up with that theory either. So I put a link to that video over there if you want to go watch that one. I've done lots of stranger videos. Is basically what I'm saying. I've done one on mermaids. I've done one on vampires. I've done one on, are dinosaurs still walking the earth today? And evidence for that, you know? So, yeah, I've done a lot of, lot of Captain Steve Talks videos. I do them in quiet periods of No Man's Sky. I mean, we all browse the internet. We all come across strange stuff. And I like to talk about the strangest articles that I've come across every now and again. If you like this format of video, make sure you hit a like, subscribe. It's a shame you can't subscribe to playlists on YouTube, right? Because you could just subscribe to the Captain Steve Talks. If you, this is the first video you've seen of mine, I do gaming, I do vlogs, and I do stuff like this. Hopefully you're going to enjoy my channel. Hit a subscribe. Anyway, till next time, salute to Mondo. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again, people in the viewer verse. Thank you.